everybody, welcome to my talk today where I'm going to give you a simple overview of what a nursing associate role is, what is the difference between a nursing associate, an assistant practitioner and a registered nurse and how to apply to become a nursing associate. If you find this video helpful make sure you give it a thumbs up on YouTube, do check out my other videos, they're all free on my channel and they support nurses career development from early career to senior nurse. So I hope this video helps you today, if you've got any questions at all I'll answer to them in the YouTube comments. When looking at the nursing associate role, it's important to know how this role fits between a support worker red and a registered nurse because we have different roles across our healthcare settings in the UK. Firstly, we have nursing assistant, health and social care support worker roles, and the job titles might be different across employers for these roles in the UK. These roles involve assisting people with day-to-day -day physical, psychological, social care needs under the direction of a registered nurse or nursing associate. And this could involve helping people with eating, and personal hygiene, helping them with toileting, mobility, taking them to the shops and providing companionship and mental health support or social care support, helping support learning disability needs. It really depends on where you work as a support worker. Then we have assistant practitioner. This again is classed as a supportive role, but they work to a higher level than a support worker. They an assistant practitioner has extended skills and knowledge to a foundation degree level. Support workers and assistant practitioners are not registered with our professional regulatory body currently it's 2023 um, so they're not registered with the nursing and midwifery council whereas nursing associates and registered nurses are registered with the nursing and midwifery council if any of you want to know more specific differences between an assistant practitioner and a nursing associate i talk about this in more detail in my video differences between a support worker nursing associate and registered nurse assistant practitioners don't just work in nursing they can also work alongside other allied health professionals so for example you can have an assistant practitioner for physiotherapy or an assistant practitioner practitioner for occupational therapy. You can also have an assistant practitioner for nursing as well. But assistant practitioner roles are work-based and employer-led, and that means that different employers utilise assistant practitioner roles in different ways. So it's best to talk to local employers about the role. Assistant practitioners also are not trained to administer medications to patients during their foundation degree, whereas nursing associates can administer some medications within the remit of their proficiencies. So we have nursing associates and um, registered nurses registered with the Nursing Midwifery Council. And once you um, are a registered nurse, there are hundreds of different settings, roles and career pathways that you can take. And lots of my videos on my YouTube channel talk about those career pathways relating to nursing leadership, nurse educator roles, specialist nurse roles and advanced nurse practitioner roles or research nurse roles. So if you're interested in any of those careers, do check those videos out. It's important to note that there are different academic levels li linked to different support worker roles and nursing roles. And it's helpful to know this when you're looking to apply for courses, to, of, for roles that you're aspiring to. I'm doing this talk in 2023 and academic frameworks might change in the future, but the premise of this slide is going to be the same, which is that we've got different training and academic courses aimed at different healthcare staff. So make sure you apply, apply for the right level and right course. We we also have different academic credit frameworks across the four UK nations. So, for example, in Scotland, we have the Scottish Credit Qualification Framework. In England, we use a QAA, Quality Assurance Agency credit framework. So the, the um, degrees and the courses are numbered at different levels. I've presented the different levels in England as the nursing associate role is currently only registered with the Nursing Midwifery Council in England. So level two, three, four credited courses in England are usually developed by local employers and local colleges as health and social care level courses. These courses might be online, distance learning, support, and they're all aimed to, to support and develop nursing assistants and support workers. New starter support workers are expected to complete the national care certificate as well. The care certificate is made up of 15 minimum standards that should be covered if you are new to care. And these standards define knowledge, skills, behaviours expected in these roles. Employers often fund the care certificate for their support worker staff. 
The next credit level is level five foundation degree. And there is a level five foundation degree to become an assistant practitioner. And this is a higher level apprenticeship specifically for assistant practitioners. You'll also note that it's a level five foundation degree to become a nursing associate. So do check that you are on the right level foundation level five foundation degree course. Do you want to become an assistant practitioner or a nursing associate? Once you register as a nursing associate, there are opportunities to top up. You can do a top up course to become a registered nurse. Finally, we've got level six Bachelor of Science pre-registration nursing degree or a registered nurse degree apprenticeship. Again, it's a level six um, degree to become a registered nurse. So you see the difference between a nursing associate and a registered nurse is also linked not just to what they do, but to the academic level they must achieve. And to become a registered nurse, there are also level seven masters, pre-registration and post-registration nursing courses, because some people um, come into nursing already with a degree. And um, so there are there is opportunities in some universities universities to do a level seven masters as well. So what does the nursing associate do? The best place to find this information is to first review the Nursing Midwifery Council website standards of proficiency. These um, standards detail the knowledge and skills required of a nursing associate. So when you complete your level five foundation degree to become a nursing associate, you have to demonstrate that you've completed proficiencies. And these proficiencies set out exactly what a nursing associate can do, what you should know when you join the register as a registered nursing associate. You'll find all the relevant proficiencies on the Nursing and Midwifery Council website. And there's different proficiencies for a registered um, nursing associate and a registered nurse. And it's great to compare those proficiencies if you're unsure whether you want to become a nursing associate or a registered nurse. And um, obviously, I've also got a video on the differences between an assistant practitioner, nursing associate and registered nurse on my YouTube channel that you might find helpful. So looking at the standards of proficiency, the proficiencies for a registered nursing associate are presented across six platforms, whereas registered nurse proficiencies are across seven platforms. And this is 2023 and nursing's always evolving. So these standards of proficiency may change, but the principle will be the same. Always look on the Nursing Midwifery Council website. Have a look at the proficiencies for nursing associates, and they include areas such as promoting health and preventing illness through health education, providing and monitoring care, contributing to teams. Um, a nursing associate would escalate concerns to a registered nurse who is the overall lead for care. A nursing associate always works under the direct leadership and supervision of a registered nurse. In contrast to a nursing associate, a registered nurse is leading and managing, evaluating care and leading the coordination of care overall. And the registered nurse assesses the patient's needs and plans patient care plans, whereas the nursing associate contributes to care rather than leading. We also have core standards for assistant practitioners, if you're interested in that role, and you'll find those on the Skills for Health website. And within these core standards, there's key tasks detailed that assistant practitioners should do, such as being competent to store and retrieve information. But the employers define the therapeutic care activities for the role, such as um, contributing to care and being directed by a registered nurse and completing records. So always look on employer websites um, as to how they are utilising an assistant practitioner role. So in summary, the key differences between support worker role to registered nurse has been covered and it relates to the level of academic credit, the nursing and midwifery council standards of proficiency, nursing midwifery council registration or not, depending on the role, and also the um, pay awarded on completion of the degree. So a registered nurse usually will start at a higher pay band to a new starter nursing associate as the registered nurse leads care, they're more accountable and they have more responsibility on registration. Uh, many nursing associates choose to stay in the nursing associate role. They don't want any further responsibility. 
uh, and the responsibility that comes with being a registered nurse. However, some nursing associates choose to top up their foundation degree using a two year top up course to become a registered nurse as they want to further develop their career, such as becoming a senior nurse, a researcher or a nurse educator, where you would need a um, Bachelor of Science degree. Some helpful tips if you want to gain some more insights into what a nursing associate does, do check out key national websites that have written information. You've got the Nursing Midwifery Council websites, NHS England, NHS Health Careers and NHS Employers. Um, many of these websites have got videos as well. So there's some fantastic videos from Department of Health, NHS career videos and Nursing Midwifery Council videos where nursing associates talk about their day to day role. You, you view a lot of those videos on those websites. You can also network with nursing associates locally if you work as a support worker already, for example. Um, don't be shy, go out there. They often you know, want to talk about the role. Ask them what they do. How is it different to my support worker role? Or you can ask questions um, on nursing Facebook forums or Twitter forums. There's lots of fantastic um, forums out there. Um, nurses Raw is a good one and you receive lots of positive answers when you put out questions on nursing forums usually. Um, talk to employers supporting nursing associates and, and the universities running trainee nursing associate foundation degrees or apprenticeships. Um, often they'll have open days and university events where you can talk to apprenticeship leads, but they also often have nursing associates there to talk about their experiences and answer any questions you have too. So do check out some of my other videos. Here's a range here. You might be looking to secure a healthcare assistant role, looking at uh, what a nursing approach, uh, associate apprenticeship is or a registered nurse degree apprenticeship. You might be applying for a pre-registration traditional degree. Um, lots of information on there and also helpful videos for interviews as well. And if you are on a course as well for students and trainee nursing associates, how to improve some of your academic work. So I hope you find those helpful. So good luck all of you. I wish you well wherever your career takes you. If you have any questions at all, put them in YouTube. If you prefer a private DM, you can DM me on Twitter or on my website. And I do have two books in the description. There are links to them. Um, how to thrive as a newly registered nurse or how to prepare for interviews and develop your career. Um, so do check those out if you're interested in the description.